I'm William Scrimcher. I'm a judo black belt. This is my buddy Jim Ferguson. He's a BJJ purple belt. And we're going to be talking today about how to deal with the human backpack scenario that we see a lot in competition. Um, so I'll let Jim show his first. I'm just going to get on his back and he's going to be standing. All right, so I've got this uh, seatbelt and my hooks in. And I'm just going to hold on for dear life because I got two points earlier on. So first, I'm going to keep my bottom high and get my head low. Then I'll make a mule kick and bring my knee back into the center to disengage a hook. Shake him off. Drive my head into side control. Critical element, of course, I defend the choke here until I can get my posture forward to put my hands here. Mule kick out, disengage the hook. Shake. Drive. Now, being a judo black belt, I deal with these things a little bit differently. I do use that same escape a lot. Uh, I don't remember where I learned it, but getting your butt up in the air and shucking them forward is something that I use a lot. Another thing that I use is, um, he's gonna hop up on my back here. I'm gonna defend the choke here, two on one hand, right? So, if I turn right now, Jim turns at the same speed that I do, right? I turn, Jim turns. What I want to do is I want to get my shoulder involved in, uh, in his elbow here and, and tuck it in very, very tight. Like I'm going to do my Sayanagi throw. But what that does is that changes Jim's pivot point. Now when I turn, Jim turns a little bit faster because he's connected to a further out point on my body. If he's connected at my neck, he turns at the same speed that I do. But if he's connected out here, then when I turn, he gets a little bit more energy moving around. Jim weighs about 170, and he's going to have to hold that 170 pounds with just this arm alone. As I start turning around, I'm going to flare his knee out with my free hand. So I've got this tucked down, I get my grip, I'm going to flare his knee out, and then I'm going to stop rotating suddenly and finish my Ippon Sayanagi throw. A lot of people like to drop down to one knee when they do this. Um, and it's not a terrible thing to do. <laughs> But I feel that it can be a little bit different, uh, a little bit difficult to clear this hook entirely when you drop down to one knee. And he's still kind of crawling up on your back. But if you find that the one knee works better because you've started the energy, the rotation, and then you get a sudden stop, if you find that works better, by all means, try that. 